What's up guys, and sorry this is a weird intro because of this, but what's up guys and welcome to the Grand Sport channel. Today we're doing the mid-range processes. So this is about fifteen hundred dollars to a thousand well one thousand dollars to a fifteen hundred dollar budget. So pretty pretty a pretty big chunk of money for your new gaming rig. I only do CPUs or processors or whatever you'd like to call them. In this series, but I'll do graphics cards, I'll do whatever. I'll do everything you would need for a computer. So, these are our three options. This one's going to be the Intel version, and then I'll do an AMD version. The Intel i7700K is one of our options. Intel 6700K is our next option. And the i5-7600K is the next option after that. All of these I'd recommend buying with a Z or X uh, chipset motherboard because otherwise you can't overclock and then why are you buying a K skewed processor? So, over here on the far left we have the i7700K coming in with 4 cores, 8 threads with a processor base frequency of 4.2 gigahertz and the max turbo is 4.5 that is fast to say the least and with 8 megabytes of smart cache a bus speed of 8 GT per second and TDP of 91 watts it's good but if you guys would like a price I have a new detail over here it is usually 349 but if you buy it today it'll be three hundred and thirty nine dollars so you save ten bucks good job and that ends in four days on the 15th of 2017 so that's for three hundred and thirty nine now the next one or really three hundred and forty nine I'm gonna do all the base pra uh, all the base prices so the next one is the i7 6700k the number of cores is 4, just like the other one. Number of threads, 8. So these are all going to be hyper threaded, except for the i5 7600K. And it has a positive base frequency of 4 GHz, max turbo 4.2 GHz. The cache is 8 MB of smart cache, and the rest are the same with the same TDP of 91 watts. On the far right, we have the i5-7600K, number of cores is 4, number of threads is 4, the processor base frequency is 3.8 GHz, and the max turbo frequency is 4.2 GHz. Uh, 2 MB less of smart cache, so that's 6 MB, with the same TDP of 91 watts. For the prices of all three of them, the i7 is 339, uh, 349. The i7 6700 is 339 base price. That means, well, as long as there is a huge fluctuation, that's going to be the price. And the i5 is 239. That's a pretty massive price comparison for just 2 megabytes less of cash and 4 less threads. If you're going to be gaming and you have about 1500 to $1,600 that you can spend on anything and some product, productive work, you can go with the i7 7700K if you're going to be doing a little, uh, not heavy, but light, um, about medium, medium photo editing and stuff, video editing, and it, extremely fast gaming. The i7 6700K is going to be uh, I would say about $1200 to $1000 system depending on what you get with it. The number of cores are 4. The number of threads are 4 like I said earlier. I mean 8. But like I said earlier this is almost the same thing just a slightly lower max turbo frequency. So if you're gonna be going if you're a bit on a, 
about 300 to 400 maybe even just you're on a $1,000 budget but I sound 6700k would do you just fine right now for a good gaming PC and whatever you'd like you know it'll work on video editing still too the next is the i5 these are the uses for this first of all it's a hundred dollars less so you could probably do a real good about eight hundred dollar about eight hundred dollar to nine hundred dollar system with this and a thousand dollar depending on what you're getting once again so first of all this thing's kinda of separate remember it has four less threads and two less megabytes of smart cash so this one's gonna be mainly for gaming it won't uh, yeah it'll work on some video editing but you can't do just video editing with this one so this is gonna be the one if you're just gaming for about medium so I would recommend with so that would be gaming with the i7700K 70, for $1,500 system, I would recommend about at least a Z170 board with at least a GTX 1070 to 1080. Mainly 1080, but prices fluctuate, so maybe a 1070 for safe. And especially if you want to upgrade later. The i6, the, the i7-6700K. I would recommend pairing it with mm, probably about 1070, 1060, and all the way up to 1080. Anything over that, you might be it's 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 overpowered. The i5, I would recommend for the i5. The graphics card I'd recommend would be some kind of 980 Ti. 980 all the way up to GTX 1080 again. So, motherboards now. i7700K, at least a Z170 board. i6700K, at least a Z170 board. And for those two, you can also go like X299 or whatever. Wait, not 299. I don't know. I don't know X as good as Z. But those are the Z. Z170 is what you want. And above, you know, you can go 272. Okay, the i5 is going to be a little bit different since it's cheaper and yeah. You're going to want a Z170 board just like before. That way you can get that overclocking and yeah. And good, good other things, you know. For instance, like lighting and stuff, just in case you're into that. Film, if you're also into form, all three of these will work because Z170 boards have a lot of cool stuff on them. All right. So the next thing is is some things like you, you just can't have without, such as memory types, memory max memory size, max number of memory channels, and whether CC supported or not. So the i7 can have a, up to 64 gigabytes of max memory. The memory types are DDR, DDR4 2133 MHz, 2400 MHz, and DDR3L 1333 to 1600 at 1.35 volts. I'd recommend going DDR4 just because mainstream and it wouldn't make sense to get an i7 7700K or 6700K or an i5 7600K without DDR4. It just doesn't make sense. Why would you do that? Max number of memory channels is two for all three of them. The ECU supported memory is no for none of them. Those are most, if you're into ECC, go ahead and check out the Xeon. Uh, compilation that Intel has. Graphics. Now I don't see exactly why you'd have on board on board graphics on this expensive a system. It it won't make sense, but maybe your power saver system or it's gonna be in some kind of like mini PC or something where you can't fit a full size graphics card. 
There was an Intel HD graphics 630, 530, and 630. I believe the 630s are better than the 530s, so that means you'd want to go with the i7700K or the i5-7600K. So, and then graphics base frequency, 350 MHz, 350 MHz, and 350 MHz. So, if you're going for different megahertz, go with, no, that doesn't matter. So, graphics max dynamic frequency. 1.15 gigahertz for all three of them. So in case you know, there's a little question mark, go to Intel Arc and find your processor that you want, and click on that question mark if you don't know what it is. And graphics video max memory. This is I don't think anybody could get up to full 64 gigs of memory for graphics. So. But that's a lot just in case you're running like five quadros, nine titans, and two Tesla, and five Vegas. So, 4K support is all three of them at 60 hertz, which is pretty good. So, the rest is all kind of random things and stuff, but the scalability 1S, 1S, and 1S. PCI 3, but you always gotta remember if you have a video card that has a that is a 2.0 version video card in the piece PCIe slot, don't worry about it, it'll be fine. For the scalability is correct, you can have a a 2.0 PCIe Express or PCI Express video card in a 3.0 slot. It's it'll be fine. Don't worry about it. So, socket supported is gonna be your normal 1151 with all three of them. Max CPU is one. The thermal solution specified. This is if you're going for Intel, which I don't really think if you're buying this much money you better be getting a separate cooler. The T junction or the point where it's gonna start thermal throttling for the I5 is 100 degrees Celsius. And I don't know why it says T case there. Case temperature is the maximum temperature allowed after processor integrated heat spreader. This is, this is the same thing, T junction basically, just in the case. 64 degrees Celsius, apparently. Here, you guys can read that. Case temperature is the maximum temperature allowed at the processor integrated heat spreader. There you go. So that's that's 64 degrees Celsius. And another T junction, which I like the T junctions because I know them a lot better, as you can see. It's a lot easier. It'll, it'll start really thermal throttling at 100 degrees C. And there may be low halogen. I shall tell you whether or not it supports Intel Optane. The i7-6700K does not support Intel Optane, but the rest do. And yeah, so you can read those there if you'd like to know. Just go ahead and pause the video. And now, that's all the information we have for all three of these processors. Thank you for watching everybody and meet you in another episode.